Okay, it says live video is starting. I know it's probably already started. It's definitely live now. Okay, sorry that took so long, but that was a lot of names uh, for the genealogy of the three sons of, of Noah and whatnot and so forth. So, <laughs> mercy me. Anyway, um, this is this is the epitome of why when James and I actually used to read together a few years back, three years ago, um, I wanted to stop when we would come to these names and Google, you know, the pronunciation so that each time we read through, we would have it and so that it would get indwelled in my brain, but it, it got annoying to him because it would delay us, but it was important to me. I know that we're not under the law and we're not under the old covenant, but it's important to me to know these names because I want to learn the whole word of God, not just the parts that apply to us, because as far as I'm concerned, the whole Bible applies to us. But, you know, some people, you know, debate about whether it's important, but to me it is, you know, I want to know how to pronounce these words, and especially if I'm going to be sharing things that God puts on my heart to share. If it involves Old Testament scripture, I want to be able to pronounce it, so... I do apologize that it took me like forever, it seemed like, to get those, but yeah, some of these, and one of them, I was pronouncing it Japheth, and it's actually Japheth. I was like, whoa, so when I thought I had, it didn't. So anyways, as I started to say earlier, our daily reading for today is going to be 1 John 5, 1 through 5, Isaiah 20 through 22, and Ephesians 6, and then and the other one is Luke 6, verses 46 through 49, Genesis 10 through 12, and Matthew 4. And since I wrote out how to pronounce these words, these names, I mean, it'll go pretty quick. So let's go ahead and start with prayer always. Father God, thank you for giving me the strength to endure the fiery darts of the evil one tonight. He's coming against he comes against us anytime we're trying to do anything for you, Father, or with you in your word. Father, thank you that you give us Ephesians 6, verse 10 onward that talks about the armor of God, that with your word and we are able to defend ourselves against the evil one, that you made provisions for us to protect us from him while we are here on this earth. Father, as we read your word, I ask that you bless us with your words, Father. Speak to our hearts and, and give us the encouragement that only you can do, that you always do, Lord. Give us joy unspeakable and just continue to do what you do best, Lord. And that's to love us, be patient with us, have mercy and show such grace that only you can do. And we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Father, I just ask, my daughter is having surgery tomorrow. And I just ask, Father, that you guide the doctor's hands, that everything goes smoothly, and that once they're through with what they have to do, that she has no pain, Father, that it takes all her pain, and that she's able to bounce right back because she does have two small children to take care of. So I just ask, I just put her in your hands, Father, and just ask you to just hold her and love her until she recovers. And I thank you in advance for hearing these prayers, and we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, 1 John 5, 1 through 5, obedience by faith. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? What's your story of faith? What led you to understand you needed Jesus? Jesus, thank you for the gift of salvation and for those who pointed us to faith in you. Amen. This 
insight story, finding life. It was a natural step for Brett to attend a Christian college and study the Bible. After all, he'd been around people who knew Jesus his whole life, at home, at school, at church. He was even gearing his college studies towards a career in Christian work. But at age 21, as he sat with the small congregation in an old country church and listened to a pastor preach from 1 John, he made a startling discovery. He realized that he was depending on knowledge and the trappings of religion and that he never truly received salvation in Jesus. He felt that Christ was tugging at his heart that day with the sobering message, you don't know me. The Apostle John's message is clear. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. We can overcome the world, as John puts it, only by belief in Jesus. Not knowledge about him, but deep, sincere faith demonstrated by our belief in what he did for us on the cross. That day, Brett placed his faith in Christ alone. Today, Brett's deep passion for Jesus and his salvation are no secret. It comes through loud and clear every time he steps behind the pulpit and preaches as a pastor, my pastor. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. For all who have found life in Jesus, what a comforting reminder this is. And this was written by Dave Brannon. Okay, Isaiah 20, the sign against Egypt and Ethiopia. In the year that Tartan came to Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him, and he fought against Ashdod and took it, at the same time the Lord spoke by Isaiah, my oldest grandson's name, this uh, by my daughter, uh, Danielle, by the way, <laughs> the son of Amos, Amos, saying, go and remove the sackcloth from your body and take your sandals off your feet. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. Then the Lord said, just as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder against Egypt and Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians as prisoners and the Ethiopians as captives, ooh, pardon me, sorry, young and old, naked and barefoot, with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Then they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation, and Egypt, their glory. And the inhabitant of this territory will say in that day, surely this is our expectation. Wherever we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and how shall we escape? Isaiah 21, the fall of Babylon proclaimed, the burden against the wilderness of the sea, though as whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it comes from the desert, from a terrible land. A distressing vision is declared to me. The treacherous dealer deals treacherously, and the plunderer plunders. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media, all its sighing I have made to cease. Therefore my loins are filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold of me like the pangs of a woman in labor. I was distressed when I heard it. I was dismayed when I saw it. My heart wavered. Fearfulness frightened me. The night for which I longed, he turned into fear for me. Prepare the table, set a watchman in the tower. Eat and drink, arise, ye princes, anoint the shield. For thus has the Lord said to me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. And he saw a chariot with a pair of horsemen, a chariot of donkeys, and a chariot of camels. And he listened earnestly with great care. Then he cried, A lion, my lord! I stand continually on the watch watchtower in the daytime. I have sat at my post every night. And look, here comes a chariot of men with a pair of horsemen. 
Then he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the carved images of her gods he has broken to the ground. Oh, my threshing and the grain of my floor, that which I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have declared to you. Proclamation against Edom, the burden against Duma. He calls to me out of Seir, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said. The morning comes and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire. Return, come back. Proclamation against Arabia. The burden against Arabia. In the forest, in Arabia, you will lodge. O you traveling companies of Dedanites, O inhabitants of the land of Tima, bring water to him who was thirsty. With their bread they met him who fled, for they fled from the swords, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and from the distress of war. For thus the Lord has said to me, Within a year, according to the year of a hired man, all the glory of Kedar will fail, and the remainder of the number of archers, the mighty men of the people of Kedar, will be diminished, for the Lord God of Israel has spoken it. Isaiah 22, Proclamation Against Jerusalem The burden against the valley of vision. What ails you now that you have all gone up to the housetops? You who are full of noise, a tumultuous city, a joyous city. You slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. All your rulers have fled together. They are captured by the archers. All who are found in you are bound together. They have fled from afar. Therefore I said, look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Do not labor to comfort me because of the plundering of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and pleading down and perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountain. Elam bore the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kerr uncovered the shield. It shall come to pass that your choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. Sorry. I had to take my medicine. He removed the protection of Judah. You looked in that day to the armor of the house of the forest. You also saw the damage to the city of David that it was great, and you gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You numbered the houses of Jerusalem and the houses you broke down to fortify the wall. You also made a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but you did not look to its maker, nor did you have respect for him who fashioned it long ago. And in that day, the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and for mourning for baldness and for girding with sackcloth, but instead joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating meat and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Then it was revealed in my hearing by the Lord of hosts, surely for this iniquity there will be no atonement for you, even to your death, says the Lord God of hosts. The judgment on Shebna, 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 oh, I forgot to look that up. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, go, proceed to the steward, to Shebna, who is over the house, and say, what have you here, and whom have you here, that you have hewn a sepulchre here? As he who hews himself a sepulchre on high, who carves a tomb for himself in a rock. Indeed, the Lord will throw you away violently, O mighty man, and will surely seize you. He will surely turn violently and toss you like a ball into a large country. There you shall die, 
and there your glorious chariots shall be the shame of your master's house. So I will drive you out of your office, and from your position he will pull you down. Then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your responsibility into his hand. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. The key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder, so he shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. I will fasten him as a peg in a secure place, and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. They will hang on him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the posterity, all vessels of small quantity, from the cups to all the pitchers. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, the peg that is fastened in the secure place will be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was on it will be cut off, for the Lord has spoken. And then Ephesians 6, children and parents, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Bond servants and masters. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you, masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. The whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. A gracious greeting, but that you also may know my affairs and how I am doing. Tych Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Luke 6, verses 46 through 49. 
This is the insight reading for the second set of daily reading for today. Build on the rock. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Lord God, we want to build our house on a rock. Help us to know that our solid foundation rests in you, with your word given us wisdom and strength. Hearing and obeying Jesus gives our lives a strong foundation. Amen. And the story is the house on the rock. After living in their house for several years, my friends realized that their living room was sinking. Cracks appearing on the walls and a window would no longer open. They learned that this room had been added without a foundation. Rectifying the shoddy workmanship would mean months of work as builders laid a new foundation. They had the work done, and when I visited them afterwards, I couldn't see much difference, although the cracks were gone and now the window opened, but I understood that a solid foundation matters. This is true in our lives as well. Jesus shared a parable about wise and foolish builders to illustrate the folly of not listening to him. Those who hear and obey his words are like the person who builds a house on a firm foundation, unlike those who hear but ignore his words. Jesus assured his listeners that when the storms come, their house would stand, their faith would not be shaken. We can find peace knowing that as we listen to and obey Jesus, he forms a strong foundation for our lives. We can strengthen our love for him through reading the Bible, praying, and learning from other Christians. Then when we face the torrents of rain lashing against us, whether betrayal, pain, or disappointment, we can trust that our foundation is solid. Our Savior will provide the support we need. And this was written by Amy Boucher Pye. Okay, we're reading Genesis 10-12. through 12. Okay, nations descended from Noah. Now this is the genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And sons were born to them after the flood. Okay, let's see. Let's see. The uh, sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, uh, Medei, uh, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus, the sons of Gomer, were Ashkenaz, uh, let's see, Rephat, Rephat, yeah, and uh, Togarma. The sons of Jovan were, let's see, where is it? Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and let's see, Dodonim. From these, the coastland peoples of the Gentiles were separated into their lands, everyone according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. The sons of Ham were Cush, see where's Miz, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, let's see where's Rhea, uh, Rama, and Sabtaka. And the sons of Rama were Sheba and there's Dedan, 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 just like it sounds. Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter, hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Sihad. 
Let's see how's that pronounced. I have it written down here. I just have to find where I wrote it. Oh, yeah. Erech, um, Akkad, and Kalna, in the land of Shinar. Now, from that land, he went to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ur, Kala, and Rezin, between Nineveh and Kala, that is the principal city. Uh, let's see, Mizraim, Miz. Wow, I know I wrote that down. Oh, yeah, Mizraim. Mizraim begot Ludum, Enamim, Lehabim, Naphtahim, Pathrasim, and Kazlehim, from whom came the Philistines and Kaphtarim. Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, the Jebusite, the Amorite, and the Girgashite, the Hivite, the Hivite, the Archite, and the Sinite the Arvidite and the Zimmerite and the Hamathite. Afterward, the families of the Canaanites were dispersed and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon as you go toward Gerar, as far as Gaza. Then as you go toward Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, Zeboim, as far as Lasha, these were the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their languages in their lands and in their nations. And children were also were born also to Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. The sons of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arphaxed, Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram were Uz, Hul, Gether, and Mash. Arphaxed begot Selah, and Selah begot Eber. To Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan begot Almadad, Shalef, I did not see these names, doggone it, <laughs> Hazar, uh, Hazarmaveth, I don't know, uh, Jera, Hadoram, Uzel, uh, Dykla, Obel, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. And all these were the sons of jo Jokta. And their dwelling place was for Mesha as you go toward Sefer, the mountains of the east. These were the sons of Shem, according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. These were the families of the sons of Noah, according to their generations, in their nations. And from these, the nations were divided on the earth after the flood. Whew, got through it. Uh, Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, his name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Shem's descendants. Hmm, I did not see this either. Uh, this is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphaxed, 
two years after the flood, after he begot our facts that Shem lived 500 years and begot sons and daughters. Our facts had lived 35 years and begot Selah. After he begot Selah, our facts had lived 403 years and begot sons and daughters. Selah lived 30 years and begot Eber. After he begot Eber, Selah lived 403 years and begot sons and daughters. Eber lived 34 years and begot Peleg. After he begot Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and begot sons and daughters. Peleg lived 30 years and begot Reu. Ru. After he begot Reu, Peleg lived 209 years and begot sons and daughters. Reu lived 32 years and begot Sereg. After he begot Sereg, I don't know. Reu lived 207 years and begot sons and daughters. Sereg lived 30 years and begot Nahor. After he begot Nahor, Sereg lived 200 years and begot sons and daughters. Nahor lived 29 years and begot Terah. After he begot Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and begot sons and daughters. Now Terah, Terah I think it is, lived 70 years and begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Terah's descendants. This is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begot Lot, and Haran died before his father, Terah, in his native land, in Ur of the Chaldeans. Then Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah, Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife. And they went out, from, out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah, Terah, were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Genesis 12, Promises to Abram. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran. And they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, and as far as the cherubim tree of Morah, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. Abram in Egypt. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there. For the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when he was close to entering Egypt that he said to Sarai, his wife, Indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore, it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. So it was. When Abram came into Egypt, that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. 
and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abram well for her sake. He had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go your way. So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. Matthew 4, Satan tempts Jesus. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city set him on the pinnacle in the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands you shall they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Jesus begins his Galilean ministry. Now when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed in Ga- to Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Four fishermen called his disciples, and Jesus Walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus heals a great multitude. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, And they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Amen. That's it for our reading for today, for October 4th. I thank you for any that joins me, whether live or even later on. I do hope that you enjoy the readings. I know they seem long, but, I mean, when we're in the presence of God in eternity, it's going to be 24-7, so it's all good. Amen. Father, I thank you 
for your words and I thank you for the time we are allowed to spend in your word without persecution for there are so many that aren't even allowed to so much as own a page of the Bible without worrying about death or imprisonment. Father, as long as we can still do it freely, let us, I pray, Lord, that we take full advantage of this time that we have, Father, to light the fire in our heart and renew our first love to share the gospel with everyone that we can. And we know that time is so short, Father. We praise you. I ask God that you add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of your word tonight. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And just know that I love you and Jesus loves you. And know that there's never a pit too deep that Jesus is not willing to pull you out. There's nothing you've done that he isn't willing to forgive you. He knocks at the door of your heart. And if you open the door, he will come in and have dinner with you and you with him. He just, he just asks. He just, it's so easy. It's the beauty of simplicity. You just believe and confess and repent. Acts 2.38. Repent of your sins and confess and believe in your heart and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died and rose again and that he paid the price of sin in full for us on Calvary and that he is the only way, the truth, and the life. John 14.6. And you will be saved. But it's not because someone told you a simple prayer to pray. It's something that the Spirit puts on your heart. And it has to only come from your words because you know what you need to repent of. Amen. It's, it's a personal relationship. It's not religion. But please do it if you haven't already because time is so short. And once our number is called and once he calls us home, it, it's too late then. So please, please, while you still have time. Anyways, have a blessed night. God bless. Shalom.